recording. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Green Effect Podcast Season 4, Episode 21, live on the air. And we have a, we have developed a, a huge cast of characters here, okay? So featured today, we've got Madeline Towns, who's a real estate agent in the Golden Horseshoe, which we were just talking about is like Halton and Hamilton and that whole golden area, we'll call it. Uh, so welcome, Madeline. And we also have Lacey Morrison from The Broker Social. You'll remember her. So if you showed up and you're listening to this podcast again, she must have done a good job the first time around. So Lacey, welcome. Hi. <laughs> So, all right, so let's get going because it, the problem is with these podcasts, we get talking and then I'm like, stop, let's record this because it's getting good. So, uh, Madeline, I have, ever since I started seeing your stuff on social media, I'm like, I got to get this person on. She, <laughs> the stuff you do is incredible. And that's really what this podcast is about. I want to talk some markets, some real estate, a little tiny bit, but I also want to talk about all the other cool stuff you're doing uh, with social media and stuff like that. So, Real quick, give me like your 30 second elevator speech, a little bit about you, go. So I got into real estate 2018. I thought my phone was gonna ring, it didn't. I really suffered the first two years of my business. And then I had a viral TikTok and I was like, oh, okay, I can use TikTok for real estate. And 2021 was my breakout year. Mm -hmm. Um, I am amassed 30 purchase deals that year from TikTok alone. And that was, uh, that was the start of what I do today. So that's, uh, that's how I got into real estate pretty much. I, I really just kind of made it on my own. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. I did, mm -hmm. I did not know that. That is absolutely incredible. Yeah. So, um, so what, how did it all happen? So, I mean, one day you're like, hey, let's try this TikTok thing. And then all of a sudden people were reaching out to you. Like what happened there? Yeah. So um, when the pandemic hit, I thought it was over. I thought it was game over. I was like, oh, the entire market's going to go to shit. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. At that point, I had done maybe four deals in two years. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't looking good for me. And I never wanted to exit real estate. I never, it never occurred to me that I was going to quit. It was like the only option for me. So I was like, how am I going to make this work? I started actually doing market updates during the pandemic on Facebook. So I would film them on my phone, upload it to Facebook. And my friends, like my Facebook friends, I didn't have a, a large amount of friends on Facebook, maybe like 600. People were like, wow, this is good. You're good on camera. And TikTok kind of rose t out of the ashes um, during that time. It's when it kind of made the transition from a children's app to what everyone was using. So I was like, well, if I apply what I'm doing on Facebook to TikTok, something's going to happen. So I actually had one video that kind of set the tone for me. I got 5,000 followers right out of the gate, and it wasn't even real estate related. It was a silly, you know, remember that clip of Justin Trudeau with his hair? He like <laughs> moved his hair out of the way. It was like slow-mo when he made those speeches. It was that. And I put like some music to it. The video blew up. So <laughs> boom, I had my built-in audience. I was like, oh, great. And then people started to get to know me. My followers grew, grew, grew. I started making the real estate content. And that's what it turned into. I just found my little niche that way. That's incredible. That it, it, it doesn't, I mean, Lacey, have you seen that from some of the folks that you work with where there's a video that kind of just vaults them into this? Yeah, totally. And it's almost always not something that they would consider their niche, like not yeah. like a, like a market update video. It's like something funny, viral. It's either something mm -hmm. hilarious or something that really pisses somebody off. And then That's all right. of a sudden they have a market. Yeah. It's, isn't it crazy that the, the, the stupid stuff you do online is what everybody likes? And, and I'm yeah. going to work with Lacey for a bit. And this is what I'm trying to understand because I'm like, hey, more charts, more information. Meanwhile, I go and I can't work my damn coffee maker and I'm famous out of that. And meanwhile, <laughs> yep. I'm giving all this other stuff and nobody wants to hear that crap. Yep. Like, is that what you're finding on, on when you're doing your stuff, Madeline? Yeah. People want relatability. That is the key. And especially in my market, with all these Toronto agents coming in in their suits um, and the history, 
the history of the real estate agent, I mean, people don't trust agents and I don't blame them. So when you're coming from that perspective, of, oh, my coffee maker doesn't work, like I'm going <laughs> to record it and, you know, go viral. People look at you like not just as who, you, what your title is. They look at you as a as a person just like them and that's who people the modern consumer has so much information they want someone like themselves to sell their house and to buy a house they have yeah. so much information that they can they can find out how much their house is worth easily yeah totally they so don't need you our role is changing and i've just adapted to that to that change yeah it's funny you say that cuz you know we talk about change and Here's a here's a question for you. I won't give any context to it. I'll throw it at you. Sure. With that, with the information available, with let's face it, realtors, mortgage brokers, anyone who's out there giving information relating to people through free mediums such as social media, what is the future of mortgage brokers, realtors? Where do you see that going given what you've just said? Well, seeing how far we've come with AI and online tools to not only price our house out, but um, look at all the data available. It's apparent to me that what's not going to happen is that we're going to be completely phased out because we can't be. You, you need at some point during the transaction, a person. You need a person. You can't just have a completely remote uh, you know, click of a button purchase. So in that way, I th I do think our role is definitely necessary. However, it's going to be the agents that are ahead of the curve that come out on top. It's the agents who are providing value way beyond, oh, okay, this house sold for this much, and this is what I think your offer should be. It's the whole package. It's a concierge. It's someone who's going to help you move. It's someone who's going to help you fix your house up before you sell. It's the person who it stands out against the rest because let's face it, our job is at some points automated um, in terms of like just the numbers part. It is very automated on our end, like even with paperwork and forms. Yeah, a monkey can do that. Um, but that's not that's not the hard part of this job. So where do I see it going? I think that there's going to be a lot of people who leave the real estate industry and it's going to be the cream of the crop that rises to the top. Yep. Uh, I, I don't know the rest of the words to that song. I was going to keep going with it, but I didn't want to embarrass myself. Right. <laughs> I was going to start singing Jump Around There by, uh, what's their name? Oh man, 90s fate, a crazy band there. Anyway. <laughs> Um, we're too you know, young. I, we're too young to know what you're talking oh, wow. about. Oh, wow. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Stop. And I, and by the way, being the older one, I just remember it takes a few minutes these days. It's house of pain. Just so you know. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <Stop it. laughs> we were nice both try. in like grade three. So <laughs> <laughs> remember I said we could swear on this show. It almost happened right there. The first one. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny you say it that way because I not this is not scripted I, I agree with you and and listen we all know what happened during the pandemic and I've been vocal about this I know on mortgage broker side is similar oh, yeah. to, to realtor side where listen you didn't have to be really good at your job you really didn't and you made it right yeah. and now we've switched to a very skill-based industry That's where right. you actually got to do your job kind of well right mm -hmm. and what was the number we had 7,800 mortgage agents not review, renew their license this past yeah. April. And I was actually shocked it was that low. I really was. So, you know, I, I think you're right. That's kind of where the, the future becomes, right? And and you're right, cream of the crop, man. Like that's that's it. And, and yeah. people who are, who have adopted, I mean, I know adopting technology is a, a used, overused term, but people who have adopted that and can get onto social media and understand it are ahead of it. I, I sure. agree with that, right? Yeah. I think too, people, just to go on top of what Madeline said about how people are a lot more discerning now, they have so much more information, they can do a lot of the work themselves. I think to that same point, uh, people are also really fed up of being fed bullshit because mm -hmm. it's been, online has been really deeply bullshit based for a really long time. And 
um, that's where you see like this huge, like multi-billion dollar shift away from traditional marketing and advertising, right? Like people don't invest, like multinational corporations are pulling their ad spends out of traditional media and putting it into social media and um, uh, consumer marketing on that level because people, the regular consumer doesn't want to be sold an advertisement. That's why when people come to me and they say, okay, well, can you make me a Facebook ad? The first thing I say is, okay, well, what does your content look like when they come to your page? Because all realtors and all mortgage brokers effectively do the same thing. You know, like, yes, yeah, some have different skill sets, mm-hmm. some have different areas that they specialize in. But at the end of the day, we pretty much all have access to the same shit and the same tools. And so what makes you stand out from the rest is what's going to make you rise to the top. And so I think that it's 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 a challenge right now. And I know Madeline can attest to this, but she's been a pro at it since the beginning that putting yourself out there and Stephen, I've yelled at you about this before and I will yell at you forever is like putting yourself out there and making your personality known almost before the data is more important because if somebody feels like they're starting to get to know you and trust you, they're going to listen to what you have to say a lot more than, right. uh, well, this is just another real estate person trying to make a deal. Uh, Cause yeah. there's a lot of that. And that's Madeline, you had, um, you had a really good, so, so the, the, the video that made me love you was <laughs> the one that you did. And you were like, mortgage brokers do better. <laughs> Man, I'm just me. talking about this. <laughs> Honestly, if, you, if you couldn't hear me cheering and like <laughs> giving you air high fives through the phone, I you weren't listening real clear. Like I was like, go girl, I am all about this. So those of you who don't know, Madeline did a, an incredible video and it was TikTok. It went everywhere. But mm-hmm. uh, basically in our in our industry, we're always trying to network and build partnerships and all that stuff. And you did a video where it was you just started with mortgage brokers do better. Stop calling me for coffee. Stop calling me for this and that. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that video. What was happening and what was the reaction? I need to know about this. At I'm so glad point- you brought this up. I I had had enough. (sighs) Like, how can you? How can you? Like, take out her hoops. Like, (laughs) yeah. How can you have the audacity to message me and say, oh, yeah, this is the, like, oh, I can get you this rate. You can all do the same shit. Okay. I, you know, and what makes you think, oh, do you want to? And the whole thing, like, oh, I'd love to sit down and have a coffee. Look. So would everybody. So would everybody. You know what? I don't, like, not having the the understanding that someone who's busy doesn't have the time to do that. Your job, you have to show me how you set yourself apart. I've come a long way showing my audience how I'm different from other realtors. You, I don't just do the same thing. I'm trying to help you. It's not going to work anymore. I don't have time to go sit and have a coffee with a stranger, like a mortgage broker is going to be like, oh, here's what I can do. You can do the same thing. Just like realtors, we can do the same thing every other realtor can do. Why? Like, it, there's just, it's so short sighted to me. And I don't really believe in cold calling on my end either. And it doesn't, people, there's so much work that goes into it and you get nothing. So not understanding that that typically it's like, it's that ship is sailing. It hasn't sailed yet. I know a lot of brokers who do get on the phone, they just pound the phone and they can, you know, get some business, but that ship is slowly departing. Um, Mm. People don't want to talk to salespeople on the phone. So I was just agitated with the amount of inbound, like, amount of mortgage brokers who were just like expecting that I would, yeah, sit down and have a coffee. And I got pushback on that video from mortgage brokers, like saying, like, why are you putting us down? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm trying to help you. I try to help realtors the same way. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it, it comes off as a little bit harsh, but that's my, that's how no, I got my style. It's off as hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, 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 Matt, Matt, listen, I I watched that. I, I, my my first thought was I shared it with my team. I'm like, yeah. guys, here because I, I, I try to 
you're right. We all do the same damn thing. Like mm -hmm. we all have the same lenders. The rates yeah. are pretty much the same. Like who cares? You're a realtor. What do you care what rate I give the client? I don't care what commission you give them. Get That's it done. Right. Whatever. And, That's and right. I think you're right. What, what makes you different? Yeah. What, what, show me. Why the hell do I want to you? If you want, if you want my time for a coffee, because I get calls from insurance advice, financial advisors, dude, you want my time for an hour? You better be putting on a show. That's I right. Got shit to you, right. Like you I'm busy it. and, and I, I can appreciate, I can appreciate a young agent reaching out to having the balls to reach out to someone who is higher profile. Okay. I get it, but learn how to do it properly. Right. Why does Madeline want to answer the phone for mm -hmm. you? Right. And mm -hmm. I get that, but that that's simple. We have so many mortgage agents, so many realtors, people let's call it what it is. People are desperate. Mm -hmm. We're going business. I mm -hmm. get it. I'd rather them doing something like that than doing nothing. Fine, but let's do it properly, right? Let's not irritate people. So when you did that, man, I was like, good for you. And anyone who called you like saying, what the hell? Too bad. Like, you know you're what? Right. Sorry. Totally right. Send me, se this is just some free advice. I'm going to give some free advice. <laughs> send Careful, me a video. you're going to get shit. I know. Send me a video, <laughs> a one minute video. DM it. I don't care. And show me a file that you just completed, like a something that you rescued. So, uh, situ send me, I'll, I'll be like, oh my gosh, wow, this person's really stepping it up. I see their face. I can see how they talk, their personality. That's what I need. I Like, what kind of business do you expect to do from like a dry, like, oh, I'd love to have a coffee and tell you about what I offer? You have to be innovative. And so I strive for innovation in my business and I expect the same out of my partners. Can I ask you a question, Madeline? I know it's mm -hmm. not my podcast, but this is a genuine okay. question that All I'm good. wondering because I, as you know, coach mortgage brokers and I'm constantly screaming at them to stop fussing so much about the technicalities and just post shit with That's their right. personality. So if you say, for example, someone hears this podcast and does make you that video, that one minute video saying, hey, this is me, here's a story. Mm -hmm. What, how likely are you to actually respond if you go back to their page and you can see zero personality? So I'll always respond to people. Um, That's nice of you. <laughs> I always, re yeah, I try, I try to, uh, there's some stuff that slips through the cracks, but for the most part, I respond to everything that comes my way. Um, if it's just not cutting it for me, I just, I tell them I work with someone. Um, I yeah. have, I have deep relationships with, I mean, I'm six years in the business now. I have my relationships very solidified, but there's always room for someone else to show me what they can do. And there's also room for having, and I don't want to call them backups, but second choice is also, I mean, realtors, again, same situation. Sometimes we're second choice. I'm willing to be second choice. I'll stay yeah. on the sidelines while you figure it out. So in that regard, yeah, there's always like, I have a CRM and I've got mortgage brokers in my CRM. There's situations where I might reach out to you. Oh, I had a conversation mm -hmm. with so-and-so. I really like their vibe. This part, my go-to is not available. Something like that. It, it happens. It has happened. That's how my number two became my number one. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and it's funny that's... how easy it is to just have, sorry, Stephen, just how no, easy ahead. it is oh. to start those conversations. Like you yeah. guys know Mike, Mike, the mortgage whiz, he's more Instagram than TikTok. Yeah. But, um, him and I did a webinar called Romancing the Realtor uh, last mm -hmm. Valentine's Day about um, exactly that, getting a realtor off the apps and into bed, so to speak. And he made a really great point <laughs> about how some of his best uh, realtor relationships were simply just because he was making like fun, life-based, silly yeah. real estate content. And people were reaching out to him being like, LOL, you're hilarious. And yeah. so I try to tell people all the time, like, you don't have to be funny, silly Mike. You don't mm -hmm. have to be like a natural thespian but if you can make more videos where you're honest about your you know inability to work your coffee maker and mm -hmm. people realtors and clients are going to relate to that and then your name is going to come to mind when they need someone so someone like 100%. you you're like oh shit i need somebody for this deal but i saw this broker who was being hilarious last week and made a really great point about x yeah that's how you keep top of mind it's like brand recognition but more basic yep you don't need a logo yep it, it's so I got to ask this question around uh, format and stuff. So the one things I I really enjoy with your videos are 
I know more about your SUV, your Toyota car than I know about my own. Yeah, I love it. I'm like, this is freak. I, I, I'm like, okay, we got a car video coming, right? I'm like, I'm excited. What's going to happen with this goddamn car, right? So I, I'm sure there was a, because I'm kind of going through that right now where I'm transitioning from stats and all the other, what I thought was really cool to more of um, doing the fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely getting into that right now. How, when did that happen? Like, how, how did you get good at that? What's your process? How do you, how do you, you do like longer videos talking about your day? I know yeah. exactly what you did yesterday, right? Yeah. But I'm also listening. I'm like, what is she going to say? I, I have a different reason for listening to you, right? Like, yeah. what is she saying about real estate? What is she, what is she, what am I learning? Wow. I noticed that she put up this, she couldn't talk about the property address till it was listed. Yeah. You know, most realtors, da, 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 whatever. Yeah. What? When did that kind of transition start to happen and how did it go? Well, I recognized early on, like TikTok gives me a lot of data about who watches my videos. So early on, I recognized that, okay, so um, a few years ago, I had um, a car and the engine blew up and I made a video and it <laughs> went viral. And, you know, there was comments like, Oh, like a realtor driving like a Hyundai, like that's like, I are you kidding that. me? Like, <laughs> and I was like, this is, it's kind of rage baity. I will admit that uh, some, I, I don't, I try, I very much try not to um, rage bait in my videos, but I know what gets people talking. Cars, everybody's got something to say about cars. Everybody. I don't know a single person that doesn't. Um, it's about knowing who your audience is. So if I see, I've done the same thing with like, I did a furnace video where my pilot light, it wouldn't light. So I was down there with a lighter, like going in it and filming it. And people were like, oh my God, this is why women shouldn't be homeowned. I think all this oh, stuff. No. But people I remember don't that. I remember that so well. <laughs> Um, it's, it's not about anything other than just filming what you're doing. And I will admit I am a little bit of an entertainer. So it's kind of a natural, <laughs> I have a natural ability to identify what will interest people or make what I'm doing interesting. Um, but it's also in like the tone in a lot of my videos, you can tell sometimes I'm, um, maybe playing the part a little bit, like being like stupid, you know, like uh, that's what, that's the humor part. And you have to have a certain level of understanding to it's nuanced, it's nuanced humor. Um, mm -hmm. and I've d dissected that through making content and seeing what people like. It's just by apply, like doing the content, no matter what I'm always on, I'm always making content because it's leading me to the next piece of content. That's either going to land me my next client or it's going to help me go viral. So it's about learning how your content is coming across, applying it, seeing what does well and just leaning into it going forward with the rest of your content. It's, it's like mm -hmm. a puzzle piece. Yeah. And it's very specific to your audience too. You know, like people will ask you all the time, like, well, I've literally had people ask me like, how do I be more like Madeline? How do I be more like Sam power? How do I be more like, mm -hmm. well, you're not them. Mm -hmm. You're not them. How to be more so like Steven, dead. right? Maybe more like yeah, Steven. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Actually, Madeline asked me that just before you came on the call. She was like, how do Thank I become you. more like Steven? That's exactly and I was what like, I said. shave your head, shave your head. I would for um, a certain amount of money. I would honestly, I would just for the hope that my hair would like grow back a nicer texture. I hear that's a thing. Uh, but it's so, it's so, there, I wish people would start to figure out like however many years into the whole TikTok uh, supremacy, three years, four years now, I guess, that yeah. it, there's no magic, uh, no magic sauce. You can't just, no. you know, become an influencer. You have to find Throw shit at a wall and see what's That's sticks. right. You got to find it. You can't be scared. You just got to do it. You have to stop planning it. There's no plan. I take my phone out. Like you said, Stephen, you know, I talk about my day. It's just a draft yeah. on TikTok. I take it out in the morning. I start recording. I draft it. And then I keep going throughout the day. 
Mm-hmm. And that's it. It's very like on the fly. Yeah. yeah. How, what's, do you have, um, how many videos do you do a day? Like, do you have a commitment? I got to do one a day. Do you have days where you don't do one? Like, what's your, what's your mentality for getting these things recorded? Cause sometimes, like you said, you're drafting it, you're continuing it. You do, do that every day. Some days, no, like what's your, how do you do that? What's your schedule? So when people ask me how much content they should be making, Per day, I'm saying seven videos on TikTok. And the reason, and people think, oh my gosh, that's a lot. It's not. It's not a lot on TikTok because of the style that people are attracted to on TikTok. There's very minimal editing, very minimal time. Everybody in this business can talk to their phone for one minute about something in real estate. So you're telling me you don't have seven minutes in your day. So I try, I try and aim for two a day on TikTok. There are days where I am overloaded with work where I cannot, but I'm always working on something in the background. So if I am overloaded and I can't post, I'll just do like a little segment in one of my drafts about what I'm doing and then it'll get posted at a later date. So every day I am working on something, but I'm not necessarily posting it, but it, it's feeding my future. So I'm always, it's always content first. There's no plan. I don't have like a set amount that I try to aim for two. Um, now that I'm like rolling and I've got the views, my views are pretty good on TikTok. I'm always like usually average amount of views on a video. I'd say it's about 3,000, which some of my videos, they get 25,000 views. Some of them get 1,000. So it's it's just, uh, it, it's a never ending game of like also chasing the algorithm. We have to figure out it's always changing. So I try and aim for two, always working on something in the background and always have like a bigger picture plan as well for like longer or specific videos for let's say Instagram. I try and make the content a little different for Instagram. Sometimes I'm lazy and I just download stuff from TikTok and put it on there. But so you're doing it you're doing content for both separately then. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And, and I you, am full time content. Wow. Full time content. But, but you're building your business from it. It's like that's right. How many times have I said back in the day, sorry guys for the older folks on the call here. <laughs> but you know we had remember we had to pay um, you know, 500 bucks a month mm-hmm. for a page in the Homes Plus magazine. Yeah. They kind of hope that Edith and, and Edgar would open up the magazine at their breakfast, right? Mm-hmm. So, well, guess what? And we don't pay for that. So to your point, like, I mean, you can just, it's part of your business. It is your marketing. It is what That's it right. is. That's so. right. That's the market. It's market. It's free. It's completely free. I haven't paid it for a single piece of web marketing since I started in real estate. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So how do clients, I mean, I know Lacey and I have talked about this, where you're going to attract the client, you're going to attract, it is what it is. If someone doesn't like what you're doing, screw yeah. it, who cares, right? Yeah, I don't care. How do you, how do your clients react? How, do your client, I'm assuming your clients enjoy because they wouldn't be working with you, but do you work it into your marketing plan for your listings? I did see a video the other day where you did a, a an agent open house and you mm-hmm, did a video mm-hmm. for them. That's yep. great. Why not? Right? Yeah. Do you work it into your marketing for your listings? Like how do your clients look at all this? Yeah. When I'm, so this is an interesting question because oftentimes when I'm doing listing appointments, I'm hired already, which is rare. There have been instances where I'm in competition and that's when my social media comes into play saying, hey, look, I've got X amount of followers across my social media and your visibility for your listing will be a lot larger. But I've never really had to use that as leverage for myself because I'm hired. People know they want to work with me because what you see is what you get. I'm the exact same on video as I am in real life. And when people connect the dots, they're like, yeah, you're hired. There's often not another realtor involved in the conversation when it comes to listing my clients' homes. So I would say it's a definite advantage, but people aren't calling me because of the exposure. I think they're calling me because they're comfortable working with me. They're calling you because they already know you like when you and I have never had a conversation before but we got on this call and we started talking like we've been like we were friends years exactly because we've been mutuals on TikTok for so long and like that's right 
is exactly why TikTok works. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you, know, you almost pick your person before. Yeah. It's you like you've them. interviewed them. Yeah. It's like yeah. That yeah. you've already, you've seen it is that awkward first coffee because you already know them. And if it's, and that's like on a client basis, but if it's another professional and ideally it's another professional who's making content as well, you already kind of have had that coffee and just scrolling through each other's videos. Yeah. It's creepy, but also very cool. That's why people have weird parasocial relationships with people on the internet. Yeah. But, but to bring it back, though, what I asked earlier about the future of real, uh, being a realtor, mm -hmm. being a mortgage broker, guess what? The people who the people who can get out there with their free marketing, get their personality out there. Listen, you, you if, if people are, are hiring you before even the listing appointment, like if they want you because of what they saw on social media and, and you're their person. Guess yep. what? That means the folks that aren't engaged with social media and have not have, have made it a choice not to evolve, mm -hmm. they're not even getting a kick at the can. Like they're not they're, they're not even as they say they're not even getting in the front door. Like they're just not. No, they don't have and they don't have a chance. They don't have a chance. And there's always going to be people who you know, sorry for using this word, boomers, who will say you'll see the comments and madly you for sure I've seen mm -hmm. it a million times. So you got that one comment like, oh, take advice from a 21 year old, which That's like right. flattering. Thank but, you. Uh, I know. <laughs> my word um but you're gonna always have like the curmudgeonly stuck in their old box people who when you post a video about your day or cursing or whatever people are gonna be like oh i would never trust you okay That's right. well then bye go exactly talk to i don't want to you the realtor who thinks social media is stupid you know mm -hmm. like goodbye you're not my if you did work with that client it would probably be a nightmare mm -hmm. so i think people especially brokers i think brokers and realtors have very different personalities <laughs> for sure um, yep. very and i hear from um from mortgage brokers all the time like they're scared of having personality online because they're scared they're going to alienate like potential audience base and like mm, yeah. who cares if you're alienating somebody because of who you are as a person then like good riddance it's funny you say that because it i guess i'm kind of going through that right now oh by the way for the record i'm gen x not a boomer just in case anyone's keeping track yeah um, but, gen uh, x is really rising on tiktok right now they're like gen x owning an army right now i'm yeah, in they play. are I'm or that's so what tiktok wants you to watch <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> I, i'm a conspiracy theorist i'm just saying <laughs> All I know is that when I talk about something, damn the TikTok ain't advertising to me. I'm just saying, okay? TikTok, so watch TikTok what you say is... around your phone. That's all I'm going to say, TikTok, okay? TikTok is just seeing our search histories, and it sees that us in the mid-30s demographic are mm -hmm. Googling exceedingly more old people shit. And mm -hmm. so now they're feeding us old people content because we are becoming old We're people. We're becoming old, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Oh. So I'm privileged. Say, like, it's 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 a, one of those things where, like I said, I'm kind of going through this transition part where, I, again, I'm trying to get more out there with personality and, and whatever. But it has. I'm almost there where it's like I, I have I have an established brand. Like people know me, which is fantastic. So I'm ahead of the curve there. But I'm almost there where it's like I don't give a shit. You mm -hmm. know, like, I, like I'm there. I, like I'm I'm almost there, and and I'm still kind of managing it because. You know, to your point, yeah, you know what? Guess what? The baby boomers and, and the, we'll say the the older Gen Xs, right, are still kind of, you know, they're still the the broker managers. They're still like that, right? So there's still mm -hmm. that aspect. And you got to manage those relationships. But I'm almost there. And I will say I have a lot of different partnerships and relationships. And when I say I'm almost there, what that also means is, I'm almost there where I'm willing to let one or two of them go. Yes. Oh, yeah. If it means if I let one or two go there, will I pick up another couple? That's right. Yeah. And that's tough. If you really, you know how hard we work. All of we're all all of us here are self employed. Okay. We know how hard it is to start a relationship, start a partnership, and to wrap your brain around. I'm gonna let that go because that mm -hmm. doesn't match anymore, and I'm going this direction. Mm -hmm. it sucks. That, that's so hard. That's big. That's, mm -hmm. Have you guys run into this? Like, am, am I? Am I? Oh, yeah. Am I having my own epiphany? You guys already had this. Like, talk to me about that. I am in it right now. <laughs> I live in it, and it's 
constantly when you're self-employed, I feel too, like making sure that you are on a track that you're not just doing because it's what you used to do, but it's what you're doing because it's best for you and your business right now. Um, and that it, it's really hard to break out of old habits, even if those habits are people and relationships. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend said something really wise to me yesterday though, because I said that like, you know, sometimes ending relationships or ending partnerships feels like failure, but she's like, it's kind of our responsibility to reposition that failure of the end of a relationship as a necessary pivot or reevaluation. And if we don't do that, we're kind of doing ourselves a disservice. We're lying to ourselves. And, you know, we spend so much time here in this conversation talking about authenticity and being true to who you are and showing up as who you are. So like that is part of it. If something isn't working for you anymore and it doesn't fit into what you're doing right now and you're in the privileged position where you can say, actually, yeah, it's shitty and it's hard and nobody likes to do it. But at the end of the day, you're going to feel a weight lifted and you're going to like open a door. Yeah. Madeline, do you see that as well? I'm leaning even more into like t tearing down these preconceived notions people have about realtors and real estate by just really not caring. And like you said, Stephen, you're at a point where you're like, well, if I lose someone over, you know, a video I make where I'm just being myself, then I'm going to gain way more. And I'm at a point in my business where I'm selecting who I want to work with. You know, the sellers who are unreasonable about their price, take a hike. I'm not taking that on. You you called me. I'm giving you my advice. And I am not going to put my energy into something where two more people down the road are going to trust me and we're going to, you know, come to an agreement on strategy. So I'm in the same respect. I'm at a point where I truly to my core don't give a shit anymore. And you can really tell through my videos because I get comments like I'd never hire you. You're unprofessional, whatever. I don't want to work with you, man. Okay. <laughs> Like, I don't know how to like say that louder than I have, but I, yeah. I, and it's not about working with easy deals. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just taking on easy things. I have a crazy story about how, so there was this uh, lady on TikTok who had a pretty large following and she was bashing realtors for the longest time just bashing them, hated them, couldn't stand them. And at one point she stitched one of my videos. This is years and years ago. Um, I sold her house four months ago. <laughs> I have a record of turning people who absolutely cannot stand me into my clients. And it's because I just, I agree with them and I'm up for the challenge for for their challenges and it's also those are the types types of people that trust people like me because i've got a lot on the line if i if i screw your sale up you can make a video and you can you can pulverize me yeah quickly overnight big time done easily. canceled mm -hmm. so yeah. there's a, there you know mm -hmm. i i have to hold myself to a really high standard the only way i can do that is by being myself, leaning into myself way more and just delivering that to people as well. So yeah. it's really about digging into who you are and not trying to be some, you, a lot of people who do this, they try and be funny. They try. It's not about trying. It's just being, you just have to yeah, be. And you don't need to be funny either. You like don't. you can be whatever you are. And I don't people, consider you myself your people. Yeah, I don't consider myself funny. I, I'm, I just am. I don't, yeah. I don't like. You are funny. Well, I believe you. you I absolutely totally believe you. are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just, it just happened that way. That you know, my tone to people is funny. Um, you know, my opinions sometimes can be funny, but yeah, it's about doubling down on who you are, really leaning into that, and using it in in your business online. Yeah. yeah, I think too, and, and you know, we we've we've sat here now. And we're we're using terms like I don't care, don't give a shit, whatever. Mm -hmm. it is, right? And 
to be really clear, especially anyone who's listening who maybe hasn't heard your stuff, hasn't heard mine, or Lacey, like, what, what I think when you say that, and, and I think I'm absolutely correct here, tell me if I'm wrong, we're not like mean people, we're not like moody, or it's, it's like we're honest, we're, we're not hurting, remember Lacey, we talked about this, we're not hurting people, no one's That's being right. hurt by what we're saying, right? Mm-hmm. It's, we're honest, like, like I've heard, man, I can't, there's been a couple of videos that you did where you called shit out. Like, mm-hmm. and it wasn't mean, it was not disrespectful. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely correct. As a broker who sees broker behavior, realtor behavior, that's just simply is not acceptable. Mm-hmm. You called it out. And, and I think when you say that, how you're, you're genuine, you're, you're on, you don't give a shit. It's not that you're being mean about it. It's that you're being honest. Yeah. It's getting hurt. We're, we're calling some stuff out because at the end of the day, and I might be putting words in your mouth here, but at the end of the day, People like you in the in the realtor world, people like myself in the mortgage broker world, we are the ones, to use your words, we're going to be the ones at the cream of the cup. We're at the top. Like, we're the ones that are going to survive all of this, right? Yeah. And there's got to be, there's got to be some accountability, some responsibility. So anyway, a bit of a soapbox thing there, but I think that that's where, you know, when we say that, we don't care what people think. It's not that we're being mean. It's that we're calling it out. We're, we're holding people to account. We're being honest. We're not being mean. Right. Yeah, and if people get butthurt by it, like a lot of the, like, honestly, I haven't opened my, my business TikTok in like a few weeks. <laughs> this is sometimes I open it and I panic and I get, I get really confronted, which the irony is not lost on me, but I was looking through some of your comments just on your recent videos, Madeline. And like, it's funny because it absolutely has not changed since we were in our together heyday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when people, when people get butthurt, um, and like when that broker reached out to you after that video that I think the last TikTok I made was a stitch of that video where mm-hmm. I was just like literally whooping. But when people get butthurt and take the time to tell you that they're butthurt, it's because whatever you're saying is confronting. That's right. Because they they either know that they fall into that category or they're scared that they do. And they're, they don't have they don't want to do the work that it takes to understand why it's confronting for them. And the easiest thing to do is bitch at you. But when they bitch at you, it's great for your little algorithm. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, and then you said, like, you don't rage bait, and you definitely don't rage bait. But no. Kind of, we're in a world right now where somebody is going to get enraged by literally yeah. everything. Any, anything you do, someone's going to be upset. Someone's going to hate you no matter yeah. what. And I think, Stephen, to your point, like, saying we don't care doesn't mean that we're bitchy i think it means that we've all developed like a bit of a boundary around what we let impact us and people the right people the people who we want to work with are going to find that energy kind of appealing and inspiring because yeah. in this in this this waves violently at the world right now like we all need to give a bit less of a well i almost said the f word give a bit less of a s-h-i-t mm-hmm. about what everybody thinks of us and so i think if we can do exactly what madeline does and just be unapologetic and but so but also so so kind about it people are people are naturally drawn to that that is what the that is what the youth call the riz that is <laughs> what the youth call it is riz okay. Got it's it. charisma, charisma. Oh, charisma. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the riz. i learned something new today <laughs> <laughs> I just learned a new one though, brat. (laughs) I apparently were describing people as brat now. I don't understand this. mm. Yeah, my kids are twenty one and twenty three. Hope you guys feel old now. Yeah, uh, so I'm more on the I'm on the I'm on the further path down the road. Where hey, can you pick me up at the bar at two a.m. Sure. Oh, I can't wait. I right? can't or, wait for my or, kids to do that. Or <laughs> there is an LCBO strike. I got the call the other day. Hey, can I stop by and borrow your vodka? <laughs> Ah, honestly that is why i had kids i did not have kids to have toddlers i had kids to buy my kids alcohol when they're 20. i like that oh boy <laughs> okay so enough about all that so um madeline i got another question for you because mm-hmm. uh i hang around a lot with with real estate agents okay poor How... you, <laughs> you not, my it, not, <laughs> not my first choice not my first choice what how how do your peers <laughs> view you and I, I i know you got your own your, your own style and stuff what feedback do you get from that industry yeah so locally i feel very applauded for what i do and nice. it's evident through the connections i've made rob golfie big player in hamilton biggest player 
uh, has one of the best real estate teams in the world. Um, I've done a number of events and I was on his radio show. That is to me acceptance. Um, I have built a, a pretty good relationship with him and um, his team's awesome. I love, I, I, I just love the connections I've built through what I do. Whenever I'm at events, agents come up to me like, oh, I wish I could do what you do. And it's like, I'm here to help you. I'll, I'll, uh, I will help you. There, there is a little bit of vitriol, I'm sure, um, from some agents. I recently had a sale where um, this house, it had been listed with an agent um, prior and it didn't work out. And then they, they hired me. That's the majority of my listings, by the way. Um, interesting. Interesting. Really interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Um, so um, I listed this house and then it was around Christmas time. We had to take it down um, because my clients just wanted a break from showings and we weren't getting what we wanted. So we were going to take a break and relist it in February. We did that. But in between, their previous agent try, tried to tell them that, you know, I was a little too young. I was a little too out there. I wasn't local at the time. I was um, based at my office was based out of Oakville, which doesn't even matter. And my clients are smart; they know it doesn't matter. So there is a little bit of that uh, in the background happening. Um, it's happened a few times, but I feel the love way more than the hate. Yeah, and I think agents know that if we're in good, it can only mean good things for them. I love to give praise. I love to give shout outs. I love to tag people. I love people who are doing good things in this industry. So yeah, I feel way more uh, appreciation for what I do than the opposite. Definitely. I'm so love happy. is louder. It sounds so stupid, but yeah. love is absolutely louder. Yeah. yeah. And then the people who do bitch look stupid. They yeah. look stupid and they look like people don't gravitate towards that level of negativity unless they also suck. Yeah. And if you're talking shit about me, it looks bad on you. Like with, you know, other agents, I'm sure it happens. Jealous. Imagine, imagine what people say. Like I can only imagine, no. right? Exactly. And I, I, I know, I know that there's probably an ongoing, you know, background conversation of, oh, she's ridiculous or, oh, I can't wait to watch her downfall. But um, the, I don't, I don't, participate in that even with other agents i just I just do my thing stay in my lane it'll yep. it would age you it would age you there's so many people yeah. online that even necessarily well there's a few in our space who do as their sort of whole personality engage oh, with yeah. the bullshit. they are the haters they engage with the haters oh, yeah, i know all about it <laughs> we're thinking of the same people and it's yeah. so I, every time I see it happen I'm like Jesus you're taking years off your life and yeah. probably money out of your pocket get a job get a job <laughs> get a life go touch grass it's the it's the internet relax yeah and if you're relax. really doing that well if you're really doing that well you wouldn't be here you know arguing Bitching and about, moaning about exactly. what other people are doing exactly yeah do, do you do you respond to all the comments on your videos? Like, do, I, I, and I, I'm asking that question because I actually haven't even looked. But you yeah, do respond she does. Right? mostly because yeah. it's really good for engagement. If you're engaged in your videos, your videos will definitely go far. Now, I can't hit every single comment. Sometimes when a video does really well, I have one that's been consistently performing really well. I did it two weeks ago about showing clients a house and then they told me they actually had a realtor. So they lied to me. Um, that video, I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going on TikTok. Uh, it's every day uh, it's amassing some views and I can't keep up with the comments on something like that, but um, I do try and respond to mostly all comments or like them. Yeah. It, the opposite is that also true from an algorithm perspective. If you don't respond to any comments, the algorithm hates you for it. All right, I got more to do tonight to get caught up. Then. <laughs> I mean, it's a, you have to imagine it like a community. So uh, sometimes, you know, people they don't follow anybody. That's not really community. Like you want to show that you're a part of it. You mm -hmm. know, you're not any better than anyone else doing this. Just be on everyone's level. Comment back, like it. Even I use a lot of comments to make my content 
I respond to a lot of the smart. Right. And that's how you stay engaged. That's how you stay really level with people. I'm no better than anyone else. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I use that, um, as content as well. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And also the more stuff you comment on and Steven, I think I told you this in our first call, but like the more stuff you're commenting on that's in the space or in your city, the more people are going to see your name too. So mm-hmm. like they call it social media for a reason, right? This mm-hmm. is where I get on my soapbox. Exactly. People forget that it's not just a marketing tool. It's meant to be social. That's why TikTok blew up during the pandemic because people were lonely and sad. Mm-hmm. And so it was a way that we connected with each other. And that's, that's right. why people go to TikTok and Instagram to some extent still um, for that connection. So if you're not connecting, the algorithm is going to make you suffer for it. But so is the actual human aspect. Yep. And how do you deal with negative comments? When people comment negatively, how do, what, what's your how, how do you react to it? Like how how do you how do you how does your typing come through? Yeah, I I, I had I had to, I'll tell you why I asked because I had one day I did a mortgage video and the guy's like, what was the comment? It was like this guy looks like someone who doesn't even own his own home. I'm like for <laughs> real, seriously. <laughs> yeah. like, my first thought was that's yeah. funny. That's funny. I'm like that's dude. Give that Mom guy basement. Give that guy metal. That is funny. It is funny. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not offended at all. <laughs> that was funny stuff, right? Yeah. But h- how do you react? Because you must get some reaction that's not exactly positive. What do you do with that? Sometimes I... She makes videos about it. Yeah. I make it into content more often than not if it's something that I can easily like put down or um, just re- rewrite the script about it. Like something I see every single day is... Real estate agents are overpaid and um, they are, w- I, I can do it. I can do Don't it. Do I, I can do it. Yeah. Do it then. And if you can, you should. That's my angle. Do it then. If you can sell your house yourself and you have the skills, then why would you hire an agent? If you can change your oil, why would you go somewhere to get your oil changed? Like, are you that much of an idiot? Like, I'm not trying to convince you to work with me. I'm trying to show you my value, but if you yourself can do it, then do, do it. it. <laughs> and, I'm not mad the, about it. I'm not losing money. No, and you you say it that way, and it's true. Like it, I don't <laughs> see that being mean because I look at it that way as well as, as a mortgage agent. Where if a client tells me I can get better somewhere else, I'm like, dude, go do seriously. It. I'm okay with it. I got because I got this pile of people that actually see the value in what I'm doing. I'm That's cool right. That. Go, man. I don't want to waste Imagine. my energy on you. Exactly. I already have Again, so much to That's give. an evolution. That's, you mm-hmm. got to be doing this. Maybe you got to get hurt a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And kind of get your, you know, earn your stripes and understand yeah. that, you know what? Go. I'm yeah. cool. Right? And I'm sure you got the same thing, Madeline. Yeah. People, some people need help and some people need more help than others. Some people need less help. Um, it's my my business is not about trying to convince people uh, to sell their house with me. <laughs> it's, it. it's not trying to persuade a for sale by owner to list their house with me. That's the last person I want to work with. I think that if you can sell your house yourself, like I said, you should. You should. Why would you pay someone? It's like any other skill. So I'm not here trying to say like, oh, trying to defend all realtors and say, yeah, you have to use a realtor. You do not. There are people who have done a mass amount of trading privately, and it's because they have the skills and the time to do it. Um, but this is a service. And it's almost like people don't realize that the price is up front. I'm telling you up front. There's no hidden. There's nothing hidden. Yeah, I'm charging you 5%. You agree to it. And they think this is like a scam. They think people are being scammed. People are paying that because they see the value and the worth in it, just like anything else. Yeah, it's so true. It's so yeah. true. And that's like any business. Like it's, that's right. Yeah, it's, you know, I look at and and our, our world is is changing like that as well. Where you know it's, and I think I've said this already, but the the more service and the more advice and the more the more stuff that we can do for our clients and hate to say it this way make dreams come true right you know (laughs) get shit done for Mm -hmm. them those are the people that are going to be around right that's right so yeah and those are the people that are going to tell their people 
And those yes. people are going to tell their people, you know, like you make a positive impact on one person. It cancels out the negativity of a hundred. Yeah. yeah, you're totally correct. Totally correct. So, yeah. So Madeline, here's a question for you. Where, if someone's starting out, okay, so I've got a couple of new agents with me. All right. God bless them because mm -hmm. it's tough right now. Okay. <laughs> Um, I hope they didn't call you. Um, but anyway, <laughs> the, uh, asking for a coffee, uh, you know, and there's new realtors and there's all sorts of new people out there. How would you, what would you recommend? What would you recommend that they do to start out? Like, give me your two-step plan here. Read the news every single morning and have an opinion about it. Okay. And what, tell me more about that. that. So I have all my... Uh, technology set up to give me news alerts on real estate. So I get the news first. Um, there's an article on CBC that just drops. I read it first because I get the alert. I'm, I'm sure other people read it first, but I'm going to be the first. If it's a piece of content that um, I know will perform well, I'm going to make that piece of content first. Um, so being on top of things. So for like mortgage agents, there's a lot of news about real estate all the time very easy to make content off the news you're reading. You don't even have to present an opinion in in your video. You can just deliver that article. That's what people want. They want to see, uh, they want to hear it. They don't want to read it. Um, that's largely how content has become. If you watch a lot of my news-based videos, I do try and have an opinion because I think that sparks debate and I think it helps engagement. But if you are just infor simply informed, you will see results because then people, because people, they, what do people care about right now? The economy, real estate, grocery prices, gas, um, Bank of Canada, those things are always going to do well. So always stay on top of the breaking news. So you're ahead of the curve. People can rely on your up to date information um, and you're always top of mind and you always have something to talk about. That's my oh, yeah. advice is just be in the know with the news. Yeah. It, it, and you know what? That, that's real simple, easy and free, right? Yep. Like it's free. just knowing your shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mean, I said like offering advice, right? Again, those are the type of people like yourself. Here's the advice yeah. on how to work with this, whatever. Well, that's because that's your craft. Like you yeah. should know totally on the realtor side, you should know months of inventory in That's your area, right. number of listings growing. Yep. I know and I'm a mortgage agent. Cause I, I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm coaching my people. Okay. Maybe we do do the sale before the purchase. I'll call mm -hmm. your realtor and talk to them about it. I need to know where bond prices are. Yeah. So that, that should, you know what? It blows my mind. <laughs> I do it automatic. I've done it since I started. Yeah. People don't, the, the, we are, we are, we are giving advice on half million to million dollar loans mm -hmm. and people don't know. I'm not expecting an economist. People don't know much at all, right? Yeah. They're, they're, you're offering a, a variable because someone told them a variable or the client said, I want a variable or not mm -hmm. order takers. That's right. I'm going off into a tangent, tangent, but that's, no, it's true. you're right. It's so damn simple. Yep. All right. Yeah. yeah you're, you're dead on. Just so. read the news, comment about it. And you will you will see results. Something that, that was only I one see, point. I need another point. So, uh, another one? <laughs> something that I see a lot with brokers is the way because they all say the same thing, right? They don't want to share the news because it seems boring, or everybody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the ways that I sort of try to encourage them to put themselves out there is a I tell them, you know, you do have an opinion, so share it because people want to hear it. But also, there's a lot like Madeline. You're sort of a, a you're a rarity in that you are very knowledgeable in the mortgage space, and you're knowledgeable about a lot of stuff that a lot of younger um, real estate agents, people in the more real estate side of things, aren't necessarily well versed in. And so, mm -hmm. I tell my clients and my my community to make the content as though they were going to give it to a realtor and say, "Here, use this." That's um, good. And that's how I've seen a lot of my clients kind of blow up is yeah. they're not necessarily sending stuff directly to realtors, but they're positioning it um, like with language like, well, you can tell your clients ABC. Um, and yeah. so realtors who aren't necessarily confident or who just don't know or who don't want to go on social media can then share their videos. And that lends itself to the community aspect of things, too. Right. Like that's that was that's the point. That's the point of these platforms is so that we can share each other's stuff. 
Very good. And oh, mortgages are boring. Um, so yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. Of realtors, like, they they are. don't want to talk about it. People yeah. Even though my whole things. business tagline is mortgages aren't boring. Yeah. No. They, it's because I'm a nerd. Everybody yeah. else thinks they're boring. Well, people ask me, like, you know, can you speak about mortgages? Can you tell us about this? I'm like, not really. Like, can I come up with something else? Like, uh, I'll, I'll talk about mortgages. But can I talk about how to market mortgages to seniors? I don't know, like something like that. I, I don't want to yeah. talk about mortgages. Like there's economists that put on suits and ties for that. Like call yeah, them all right. Other than that, I, let me yeah, try to end this. Right? Nobody knows anything anyway. No one knows. Just, they like, don't know. Your best guess out of your ass. They don't know yeah, shit. <laughs> That's what COVID has taught us. It doesn't matter how long you've gone to school for economics. <laughs> guess what? It means nothing. That it means nothing. nothing matters. It's whoever's wearing the most expensive suit is who people trust. Yeah, whoever has the most Cartier bracelets, actually, in real estate. Whoever has the most jacked up G-Wagon. <laughs> God, and the, the crypto bro realtor dudes really wonder why everybody hates them. They really, they're curious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah well i listen. mean love a crypto bro <laughs> yeah me too i was gonna get you some hate <laughs> all right madeline lacy thank you so much it has been incredible having both of you on madeline we're gonna continue i'm gonna continue to watch man i i, I am i i watch you all the time so you keep doing what you're doing i i, I think i think you're on to something I, I think um I, and like I said, I, I've given it to my team to say, look, like watch these videos, like le freaking learn, right? Like, and not don't copy what she's doing. She's got to do your own thing, but listen to what she's saying, like listen to the words, right? So yeah, um, just awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time. So shameless plug, how can people go on and experience what I'm talking about here? Just Google me. <laughs> Just go at a girl. Love it. I've said that too. I love you know you made it big time when you can say just Google me. I love it. I, I'm the first result. <laughs> Google me. Awesome. I yeah. love it. Love it. Yeah. And Lacey, throw out your handle too. Uh people want to talk to you about uh, social media, marketing, <laughs> stuff like that. You can Google me too at the broker social. <laughs> However, you'll notice that I am no longer a prolific content creator because I'm so busy making it for everybody else. Yeah, but we're gonna talk about actually, that. We're gonna. Talk I was just gonna her. say, hanging out with my old TikTok bestie Madeline. Yeah. Has, has has reignited a spark. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. She said that about me too. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. True. Then I still haven't. Cool. <laughs> you both are awesome. <laughs> This we this was you. really good. It was. It, I felt like I was hanging out with my buddies. So yeah, good. That's what we're doing. Really we're cool. hanging out, shot, talking shit, just like we That's would in right. real life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so much again, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And as we end up all of our shows. Keep it, have fun, and only five-star reviews. It doesn't accept anything else. Anyway, <laughs> talk to you soon. 